So you have been assigned a one pager project. Well, how do you do that if you're not going to do it by hand with a piece of paper? How can you do it electronically? Luckily, there's a wonderful website out there called canva.com that can assist you with making a very nice and professional looking one pager project where you can go and cover all of the materials that your teacher is asking you to cover um, in a simple and efficient way. So let's get started. First, what you want to do is go to canva.com. If you do not already have an account, don't worry. They offer free accounts. Yes, not all of the um, options are available for you with a free account, but you can definitely make a beautiful, wonderful one-pager project with the free account. My students do it all the time. So once you have created it, you can go on in and I tell my students to just go in and get the worksheet template since it will be all set up for you. <clears throat> when it is loading, you can choose if you want to have it horizontal or vertical. You can always go up into the resize to go and change it if you want it, say the width 11 and the other part to be um, eight and a half. Now, um, once you have your blank template, yes, they do have various styles and items in there um, that you could pick from. For some reason, a whole bunch of kind of kid items are popping up. That's probably not very helpful for you. But luckily, you can create your own style within there. They have elements where, for example, you can type in like square to kind of get a square um, rectangular shape in there. If you want to do that, you can change the color of it to whatever you would like. Um, they, of course, have different thicknesses to the squares um, or to the boxes, and you can pick from a long list of them um, if you want to do that. Um, of course, you can upload your own images. Um, for example, if you are doing a one pager on a project or on a item that you know you can upload a specific picture to, you can easily do that, and then you can format the picture to fit in perfectly how you want it. Of course, you have your various text boxes that you can create. Um, they, of course, have some fun fonts and other items there, but you can create your own there and place it where you want it. So right here, I'm just going to, of course, put it at the top of my page um, and it will help you make sure that it is nicely aligned. Um, I am going to be doing my one pager project on a random person just for the fun of it. Now, since I don't want to add two lines, of course, I can shrink the size of the text um, to make it form, or if I want even a different font, I can go and change the font and, of course, re-size um, it. Um, if I did want it on two lines, but say I don't want the space to be so much, I can go and change the spacing to, yeah, look how I want it to specifically look. And, of course, I can change how it is justified um, for me, I'm going center justified on this one. There are other effects that I can use if I want that hollow look to it. Um, of course, changing the thickness of the letters and so on and so forth. So you can, you know, go in and have fun. Animating is not going to work if it's going to be a project that is going to, for example, be printed. That one's not going to necessarily help you. Either way, say you have various categories that you have to cover for your one pager. You can go in and use boxes if you want. Um, you can use, say, for example, shaded boxes, turn them into different colors here. Um, you know, say you're going to go more on a beige level for a background. Um, for a box to show that this is one specific box that you are going to be putting information. You can change the size to however you want it. And then you can go on in and add some text. So I don't know what I'm going to be covering, but maybe the early life of this random person. And I can put that in here. And maybe I'm going to expand it a little bit. And then I can put in, of course, the information that I want to um, about the person. 
Um, and traditionally, if you're thinking about how big this is going to look when printed, well, think that usually you are typing a essay or something on Google Docs or Microsoft Docs or whatever you're typing in. It's usually around size font 12. You can, of course, use control C, control V to create more boxes. If you want things to be sized the same, you can, of course, go in and change the color if you want the other boxes to look somewhat different. And you can create a very nice format or template there for you to put in all of the information that is required for you for your one page or project. Of course, if you need to put in photos, we have already talked about this, you can upload photos or you can go on in to their photos and use one of theirs. However, if you are using one of their free accounts, the thing I say right away to do is click the free button so you're only seeing the pictures that will not have a watermark on them when you actually put them on your one pager. And that will just help you not have that frustration that can develop when you are having watermarks show up on your project. Now, what do you do when you are done with your project and you want to hand it in? Some teachers out there can have you hand it in via Canva and share it directly with the teacher. If they do that, they can show you how to do it. If not, you can go on in and click the share button and download it. I would suggest to download it there as a PDF standard or a PDF print as that would be the best quality. And from there, you can either print it off on a printer or upload it to the portal that your teacher uses for you to hand in assignments like the Google Classroom or Schoology. Um, that is it for this quick tutorial on how to use Canva to make a one pager project. Of course, there's a lot more to this entire website, but this is just focused on this quick and easy way to make a one pager. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and thank you very much for watching.